In this video, we will review transformations like reflections, rotations, dilations, and translations. Now, when it comes to these transformations, there are several rules that can be described in terms of what will happen to a generic point x comma y. What will happen to x, what will happen to y. Many of those are common sense. Um, but a few of them are worth memorizing. So I suggest you memorize the ones that I'm about to go over on this list. The ones in yellow are the reflections, and the ones in green are the rotations. Now, in addition to this color coding and such, I like to draw a line right here and right here. And that's because everything between these two lines, the x and y reverse. So it will just help you memorize the list if you write everything in this order and you mark off the lines like I just did. Um, so x, y is going to become some type of a y and an x. We'll worry about the signs later. But everything in between the lines here will be y, x. Okay, practice writing this list over and over again. Um, everything outside of the lines, these other three, will be your x, y. All right, so the order doesn't change for these. All right, so now all we have to worry about are the signs. You'll notice if I put down a negative sign, I won't say negative x or negative y. I will say the opposite of x or the opposite of y. And I recommend you do the same. It will help you avoid a common mistake. Anyway, let's go ahead and put in the signs. So when you do a reflection over the x-axis, the x value stays the same, but you have the opposite of y. If it's a reflection over the y-axis, the y value stays the same, and you have the opposite of x. When you reflect over the diagonal line y equals x, um, it's just yx. Uh, you don't take the opposite of, of either thing, so that's it. If you do the reflection over the um, downward diagonal line uh, y equals negative x, then it's going to be the opposite of y and the opposite of x. All right, the negative sign here kind of gives it away. If you're going to do a 90 degree clockwise rotation or 90 degree counterclockwise rotation, one of these will be negative. But I think of it about it this way. Clockwise is like the normal way. Sort of, that sort of matches up in my mind with the positive direction. So the first thing I see is a positive. Positive is normal. Clockwise is normal. Um, and then this, later on, I will have the opposite of x. Counterclockwise, that's the opposite of clockwise. So the first thing I'm going to see is the opposite of y. And then, you know, x is just normal. Now, for 180 degrees, it's just the opposite of x and also the opposite of y. All right, that's it. Memorize this list. Um, pause the video, see if you can write this list down on a sheet of scratch paper without looking, and then check your answers. Okay, so for problem number one, they're giving us the rule. XY becomes X plus 8, Y minus 12. What would be the image of the point 10 comma 3? Well, we simply apply the rule. All right, so the image, we're supposed to call it F prime, that's just going to be 10 plus 8, right? Because that's what the rule says. Um, and 3 minus 12. So that means that F prime is going to be 18 comma negative 9. Now, on the other hand, if I want to find the pre-image, Right, so they're basically giving us the answer and they're asking us what x and y must have been. Uh, so we're working backwards. So we just have to do the opposite of both of these things. 
So, um, you know, so this 10 came from doing x plus 8. So if we're going to undo that, we have to do minus 8. This 3 came from y minus 12. If I'm going to fix that, I need to do plus 12. All right, so that, that tells me that the original point, the pre-image g, must have been 2, comma, 15. Okay, and you could check the answer by applying the rule and see if you get 10, comma, 3. And of course you will. So if they say pre-image, do the opposite of the rule. If they say image, just do the rule. For number two, we need to translate left two and down seven. Well, left two and down seven, that means that we're going to do x minus two and y minus seven. All right, but since we have a graph and everything, we can just move these points around. So if I take, for example, point F and I move left two and down seven, that would look like this. Here I'm left two, and then there's down two, four, six, seven. So this will be F prime. Okay, and I know that point G, if I went left two and down seven, is going to be right here. So that'll be G prime. And I know if I go left two and down seven, that uh, this will be E prime. And I'll just connect those dots. So that's what number two would look like. For number three, we need to reflect across the x-axis. So I have a choice. Um, I know what the rule is going to look like uh, because we talked about that over here. Uh, reflecting over the x-axis, that's x opposite of y. So let's go ahead and write that down, x opposite of y. Okay, so I could consider each one of these coordinates and do x opposite of y. Um, or I could just use common sense. Like, here's the x-axis right here. So if I want to reflect over the x-axis, um, I'm just going to go the equal distance on the other side of the x-axis. So point F is just going to be, um, since this is 2 above, this will be 2 below, and there's F prime. All right, uh, point E is 4 above, so I'm going to go 4 below. All right, so using common sense is going to be a little bit quicker when you have the graph like this. All right, and this will be G prime. All right, but it would be the same thing, for example, um, if I looked at the coordinates and I said, hey, look at point E, that's the point 2 comma 4. Okay, and if I want to find E prime, all right, according to the rule, we do X and then opposite of Y. So that would be 2 and then negative 4, because that's the opposite of Y. And then, so if I went 2, negative 4, oh, look, E prime. So I could have done it that way. All right, but sometimes common sense is quicker if you can manage common sense, which for some people is a trick, let's be honest. Okay, that's it for number three. For number four, we are to reflect this image across the line y equals negative x. Now, the line y equals negative x is this diagonal line that goes from corner to corner, all right, downhill because it's negative x. Um, now, I really would like to change the color of that to something else. Um, let's just make it, let's make it blue. Okay, now, um, I think even though it would be pretty easy for me to do this um, using common sense, there are enough students that will find it easier to do it using the coordinates that I'm just going to do it that way. So remember, if I want to do a reflection over the line y equals negative x, um, it's going to be opposite of y, opposite of x. 
All right, so it's important that you have these memorized. Opposite of y, opposite of x. Uh, and they want us to write that down right now. So opposite of y, opposite of x. So let's go ahead and write down the coordinates of EFG. So uh, point E is the point 2 comma 4. All right, point F is uh, negative 2 comma 2. And point G is the point 3 comma 2. So we are going to do opposite of y and then opposite of x. All right, so E prime, the opposite of y is negative 4. And, the, and then the opposite of x is negative 2. And then f prime, the opposite of y is negative 2. And then the opposite of x is positive 2. And then g prime. The opposite of y is negative 2. And the opposite of x is negative 3. So let's just plot these. So e prime is at negative 4, negative 2. So that'll be right there, and that should be E prime. And then F prime is at negative 2, 2. All right, negative 2, 2. So notice that F prime and F are actually in the same spot. And that's what's going to happen when the point is on the uh, reflection line. And G prime is at negative 2, negative 3. So negative 2, negative 3 would be right here, and this is gonna be G prime. And then we just connect the dots. Okay, but the colors, man. Gotta have the right colors. And there you go. That's it for problem number four. For number five, we are going to rotate this image 180 degrees around the origin. So um, let's remember what the rule said. Uh, by the way, all of these three rotation rules only apply if we are rotating around the origin. So I should have said that. Rotations, and I'm just going to add around the origin. Okay, we can only use these rules if the center of rotation is 0 comma 0. Anyway, um, 180 degrees, that's opposite of x, opposite of y. And I think they want us to write that down. So this is going to be opposite of x, opposite of y. So that means that'll be uh, negative 2, negative 4, positive 2, negative 2, negative 3, negative 2. And we'll just plot those. So negative 2, negative 4 would be right here. And that'll be e prime. Uh, 2 comma negative 2 is right here. And that'll be f prime. And negative 3, negative 2 will be right here. And that will be g prime. And then we just uh, connect those dots. And that's it for number five. Number six, we are rotating 90 degrees clockwise around the origin. And we decided that 90 degrees clockwise, that's going to be y 
opposite of x. So let's write that down. We're going to go y and then opposite of x. OK, um, so y is 4. Opposite of x is negative 2. y is 2. The opposite of x is positive 2. y is 2. The opposite of x is negative 3. So if you say the opposite of every time, you're going to do it right. Um, if you say y negative x, then you're going to be tempted to put a negative sign right here on this 2. But it's not negative 2, it's the opposite of, of x. And since x is negative, the opposite of x will be positive. So say the opposite of x instead of saying negative x so you don't make that mistake. Anyway, let's plot these points. Um, so 4 comma negative 2, so here's 4, negative 2 is right here. So that's going to be e prime. And then 2 comma 2 is going to be right here. So that's f prime. And then 2 comma negative 3 is going to be right here. And that'll be g prime. And then you just connect those dots, man. And there you go. For number seven, we are to dilate from the origin by a scale factor of three over two. When you're dilating from the origin, all you have to do is multiply by the scale factor. This is not on the list of things to memorize because it is common sense. So the scale factor is 3 over 2. So xy will simply become uh, 3 over 2 times x, comma 3 over 2 times y. You just multiply everything by 3 over 2. So that's what we're going to do. So we'll do 3 over 2. Um, times 2 and 3 over 2 times 4 and we'll do 3 over 2 times negative 2 and 3 over 2 times 2 3 over 2 times 3 3 over 2 times 2 and these are the values that I'm getting um, now, uh, most of you can do these in your head, uh, but I'll just mention, uh, for example, look at 3 over 2 times 4, just as one example. So if I do 3 over 2 times 4, that's the same thing as 3 over 2 times 4 over 1. So you should be thinking, for example, that this would be 12 over 2, and 12 divided by 2 is 6. So like that's where I'm getting the 6 from. And uh, over here, 3 times 3 is 9. Uh, 9 divided by 2 is 4 and a half. And, uh, you know, if you need to use a calculator for a, a little bit of, uh, you know, some of these calculations, that's okay. Um, but just for an extreme example, if you just had no idea what you were doing, you could go 3 over 2. Okay, I'm looking at this one right here, 3 over 2 times 3. So I could do 3 over 2 times 3. Okay, so I'm getting 9 over 2, which I could write down, but for graphing purposes, a decimal would be best, so I toggle it, and then I get the 4.5. All right, so if you can do it in your head, great. If you need a calculator, you know, do what you got to do. So anyway, now I'm just going to plot these points, connect the dots like we always do. So that's what number seven is going to look like. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Go ahead and click here in the red apple to watch the next video. Click in the green apple to subscribe or click the yellow apple for the full playlist.